Hello and welcome to episode 92. And I thought I had a pretty good handle on the sort of microphones that we use here in the studio. Especially, the, you know, the modern, big, chunky things that you see people on YouTube stick in their faces. Um, and I thought I knew most of them and we've reviewed loads of them. But one appears to have completely passed me by and I'd never actually heard of it. Uh, I saw someone using a microphone. It looked sort of vaguely like a an EVR E20. And I poked about a bit more and discovered it's called Limelight. I mean, a Limelight 512. I knew nothing about it, watched a couple of videos and um, sort of got a bit confused. I wasn't quite sure if people were saying it was good or bad. To be honest, they sounded okay to me. So I thought I'd have a look. Now, the videos that were two years old were saying that they were around about $200, 180 quid. Uh, and I thought, mm, it's getting close to the price of some of the ones that we normally use. And Limelight clearly is of Chinese origin. It's, you know, it's a company who are importing microphone parts or the complete things from China. Don't know which. Um, but I thought I'd have a go because the current price is now under 100 quid. So I think the first reviews were in 2021 that I saw. And now in 2023, instead of being 200, it's 100. So what's going on? Um, I noticed one of my German supplies that I use quite often and trust quite well. Um, and I ordered one. Um, nice box. I mean, it looks a pretty thing. It's not particularly heavy. I do notice that from sort of you know, the minute I've got it in my hand. So what does it say? Limelight. Dynamic broadcast microphone. And it's got a nice pretty picture on the front. And the picture looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, it does look a bit like an RE20. Please don't think this is an unboxing video. It's just that I haven't taken it out of the box yet, so I'd be interested to see. Uh, okay, little case. It's quite a thick instruction book. I wonder if that's gonna be in lots of languages. Uh, yeah, it is. Handy if I want to learn some of these because I don't know what this is, but the actual, the English section goes, uh, no, nah. about three pages. Nice big chunky book, three pages in English. Um, an interesting sort of mic clip, sort of yeah, little rubber insert. Does appear to be made of some kind of resin product, maybe. Difficult to tell, but it's it feels quite solid. And now for the microphone itself. Well, um, it looks nice. It does does look nice. It feels quite nice. The only snag, really, I suppose, is it is pretty lightweight. And if I hold it up to one of my lights here, no, I could just about see through, but you know, whatever's foam is in there is pretty dense. Um, there's nothing at the very bottom. And if I bring it down, looks like the majority of the stuff is in there. So immediate thoughts are that this section could actually be empty. Um, oh, when I, when I give it a knock, there's a definite boom type source. Let me hold it next to this mic. Not sure if that comes across on the mic as well as it does to the ear, but uh, it's interesting. I mean, designed in Austin, Texas, but made in China. Uh, Limelight Dynamic Broadcast mic. Oh, it does have a switch on the bottom. Look, there's a low cut switch on the bottom. Just in there. So there's actually a switch that lets you cut off the bottom. That's useful. But that's it. So visually, I think it's quite an attractive microphone with the sort of charcoal grey colour and uh, the silver grill. It's quite sturdy. It's not wobbly. You know, you can't, if, if you squeeze the grill, it doesn't move. It's not. It's not horrible by any means, and yeah, it's quite attractive. And appears to be quite well made, bar this slightly odd resonance. But I guess that's probably something inside that's designed to. Um, stop the outside getting through to the capsule and it's just unfortunate that it bongs a bit 
whether that will actually bong in, in uh, audio terms. Don't know. We'll find out, won't we? Well, there we go. Uh, got them up. At the moment, uh, I'm just over a hand span away. So you're hearing me on this M. Uh, 7B, the comparison mic. So let's cut across straight away to this and not mess about. So this is what the mic sounds like. Um, it appears to be all right, actually. Um, I don't think it's quite so warm at my sort of preferred distance, but I guess that's just because I like using mics at a distance and the, the SM7B means you can go in and out and it doesn't really change that much. But when you use any other sort of dynamic, uh, it does. Now, I've had to go and quickly look at the blurb because it was pretty obvious that this is a bit more hyper than a cardioid, and it does appear to be a hyper cardioid microphone. I didn't know that. I thought it was a cardioid, but it is a hyper. So the off-axis sound sort of gets thin quite quickly, and at the sides, it's uh, you soon go off mic with it. But that's probably not a problem for most people who use these sort of things. So let's... Um, Let's try what happens if we do get a bit in closer. You know, you know I don't like that, but I know lots of you do. So let's do that. So what have we got now? I'm now speaking from a hand spans distance away from the 512. Let's do some P's and B's into the 512 and see the sort of results you get for that. So I'm really quite close in. Hand span, that's close for me. P's and B's and some sibilants. I don't think it's going to cause us a major problem because the mic's well packed. I mean, when I hold it up to the light, you can hardly see through it. So there's a fair amount of foam in there, I'm thinking. Um, so P's, B's, S's, all that sort of stuff seem to be handled reasonably well. I'll do a comparison, if you like, on the uh, SM7B. So if I move across to this one, same distance, just a hand span. Um, the P's and the B's and the S's in this one. Uh, there's a tonal difference, I think, but all in all... Uh, they're both quite usable, I think. I'm not quite sure that if, you know, these two things are different prices. Uh, I mean, when one was 200 and, you know, against the price of an SM7B, you know, that's probably still cheap, I suppose. But at 100 compared to the SM7B, um, I, I quite like this microphone. I can't deny it. I don't see any issues with it at all. I, f I saw a few fairly scathing reviews of it and people didn't like it but I think it's not bad it certainly looks good I mean if you're doing it for sort of the visual impression it's a nice mic to put in um the charcoal and the silver stand out a bit I mean maybe they could have sort of toned that down a little bit I don't know but all in all um I do like this microphone what do you think um I mean for a, for less than a hundred quid uh it's I think it's pretty good value, really. I don't object to this at all. What I will do is whip it out of the mount and just rotate it for you so you can hear what happens as it's a slightly unusual pickup pattern. You don't normally get hypers, do we? Right, so that's the same distance from my mouth and I'll just spin it round. So now we go around the side of the mic. So that's me on the side of the mic and that's me on the back. I'm trying to keep the capsule about the same distance away. So if you swing it round there, back to the side, swing it round there, we're on the front. Uh, it's like a high prison, it just does what they do. But all in all, I'm fairly impressed. Anyway, folks, I hope that was of some use. I mean, it's, it was certainly new to me. So maybe uh, some of you have never heard of this either. Give it a look. Look after yourselves. See you on the next video. Take care.